What is up, you wonderful people? I have been asked how to do this so many times. Numerous, numerous times. Up until today, I always said no. Unfortunately, using my method, it is not possible. But I was wrong. Video sponsored by Squarespace. Let me show you how to do it. I have my clip here, right? And I, what I wanna do, I have this little yellow ball. It is actually a practice pickleball. What I'm gonna do is find a spot on the timeline where the ball is like pretty clear. Uh, ideally, I would have over cranked the shutter on this so that the ball was always very clear, but here's a frame where the ball is clear. And I'm gonna come over to the right hand side and add a tracker to this clip. So nothing has been done yet. I just need to add a tracker. Go down here in the inspector, click the add button on tracker. And then when you're adding your tracker, uh, first thing you want to do actually is change this from automatic down to machine learning because that's the best version of the tracker. I'm going to make this square a little bit smaller. I'm going to turn it into a circle because the thing that I'm tracking is circular. I'm going to put it over top of the ball. I'm going to get it as close as I, as I can and uh, you really want to get this precise. If I needed to, I could zoom in on the viewer to be able to get like really precisely that grid over the thing that I am tracking. Then I'm going to come up here and tap on analyze and that's gonna analyze both forward and backward because I tapped on analyze and neither of those arrows. Hit done, so now the tracker on this clip is set, right? Now, with the clip selected, I'm gonna come up to the top of the inspector and I'm gonna change the Y scale to just negative one, all right? That's gonna make the clip very, very small. That was the Y, but it's very, very small. It's very, it's like, it's like it's very tiny. We're gonna put the X at negative 100 and I'll explain this in a second. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold option and I'm gonna drag this clip up on top, all right? So now I have two of those. That just created a duplicate. On the top clip, this is the clip that, this is the clip that we're gonna see. I'm gonna click on this little transform modifier right here and that's gonna bring up uh, transform and tracker in the middle of the screen. If it doesn't bring it up, like if you don't see that, you simply just need to hide your browser so that if it doesn't, pop up, just hide your browser right over here on the right hand side and that's going to make your, your pane big enough to be able to see uh, this transform and tracker. So the transform modifier is selected. I'm going to go up here to tracker, click the down arrow next to tracker and use that tracker that we just created, that object track. So tap that. Now with my top clip selected, I'm going to come over here to the inspector again and I'm going to change the scale on the Y axis, so now we're on the top clip, remember, to negative 10,000, uh, all right? Again, this is math, but we took that negative one and we multiplied it by negative 10,000 and that got us to 100. Now the last thing that I need to do to get this ball just to stick center frame is go up here to the X position and slide the ball over you can see I have my view horizon turned on. Uh, if you need to turn that on, just go boop, just up here to view and go down here to show horizon. That's gonna bring up the horizon so you can see exactly where the middle is. I just slid that X axis over so that the ball is right in the middle. And now when I go down here and play this, Boom, look at that. So it's not, it's not using any Y up and down, right? It's only using that X, okay? The one minor tweak that we're gonna have to make is because we needed that Y to be negative one, we need to just correct that a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna highlight these two clips, turn them into a new compound clip. Once we have that, I'm going to scale up. You could probably do like 102, 103, whatever works for you, but just scale up a little bit. And then you're just gonna slide that up just slightly so that you don't have a black, a little tiny black bar at the top or a little tiny black bar at the bottom. Just make sure that your entire frame is filled. I'm gonna tell you about, I'm gonna tell you about Squarespace and then I'm going to explain how and why this works. Squarespace has got some awesome new stuff going on. First is design intelligence. It's two decades of industry leading design experience combined with AI to help you craft a beautiful, more personalized website quickly and easily. Second is Squarespace payments. You can manage all of your payments right in Squarespace and give your customers more ways to pay with all the regular methods plus ACH direct deposit, Klarna, 
Afterpay, Apple Pay, and ClearPay. And lastly, right along with that, Squarespace invoicing. You can send estimates, proposals, contracts, and invoices right through your Squarespace site. Makes it super easy for your customers and for you as a business owner. If you wanna try it out, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Warner to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Before I explain it, let me just take this landscape video and convert it to a vertical video. Uh, in the quickest, easiest way to do it. So the way you're gonna do it is go up here and right click on your project and hit duplicate project as, and then change the video to vertical. Uh, you know, make sure that it's as big as you want it to be. Once that happens, you can see if I double click on that new project we created, it's right, but it's not filling that whole frame. So with that compound clip selected, we're gonna go down here to spatial conform and change that to fill. And that's just going to fill the entire frame with our compound clip. On to why this works. In real life, okay, this ball is moving in space. Is that correct? You know, it's moving in space, right? In real life, and then in pixels, when this ball moves this much to the right, let's say it's 20 pixels, we wanna cancel out that motion. So if you wanna cancel out 20, on a number line, what would you have to add to it? You'd have to add negative 20, okay? And that is true for every single frame in this entire video. Whenever it moves one way, we wanna cancel out that motion so that it puts it back at zero on the number line, okay? So the way that we do that is we track where this ball is in space, then we just tell that actual video clip, that actual video file, to cancel itself out, to cancel out this motion. As long as we tell the video clip to move back towards zero, the exact amount that it has moved away from zero, it's gonna appear like the ball is just always staying at zero because we're canceling out all of that motion. You move 20 this way, all right, move 20 back this way. So that's what we're doing with this tracker and these negatives. We're just canceling out all of the motion of this ball or whatever it is that you're tracking so that it stays right where you want it to within the frame. And you can actually see that happening here. Anytime the ball moves left, the frame is moving right, that same exact amount. Anytime the ball moves right, the frame is moving left, that same exact amount. And so we're just using math to be able to cancel out the motion of the ball. This is kind of a hack on a hack. Massive shout out on the Apple forums to ZSAM13 and Luis Sequeira1 who figured this out just chatting. They're just chatting. So I set out to be able to figure this out, right? Tried some AI stuff, didn't work. Decided to just Google it. The first search result I come to, only three replies to this, uh, you know, on this query. ZSAM asked, I wanna be able to locked on track, but only on the X axis. And that's what I've always said you can't do. Louis said, are you trying a trick like explain in this video? I click on the video, it's my video. Man, that feels good. So I'm like, all right, they're talking about what I'm talking about, at least. At least I know that, that, that we're all talking about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? We're all talking, that's talking. So Luis gives a suggestion. ZSAM comes back a couple days later. No, same day. He said, yes. Thank you, Luis. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Took some fiddling. I set the tracked clip y-axis to negative one. So then on the upper layer clip, I had to set the y-axis to negative 10,000 to be able to correct that. So thanks to Luis and ZSAM who just figured it out. Who just figured it out for me. Didn't even make me, I didn't even have to work. I just looked at their conversation. I was like, you guys got it. You got it. You understood it. You understood the concept. Let's go. I love it. Hope that this was helpful. If you do want to cancel out motion of both X and Y, check out this other video, which is an older version of this video. Be sure to still use machine learning because what that does is it helps it helps Final Cut be able to like track. Say your object gets uh, covered, it helps it to be able to track through whenever it got covered in the frame. It's just the best way to do it now that we have machine learning within Final Cut in 2025. So thanks so much for being here. I hope that this was helpful. I will see you in the next one.